I have two guests. Karen Mitchoff is a spokeswoman for the Contra Costa County Employment and Human Services, which oversees the Head Start program in Richmond, California. And joining us from San Francisco is Nicole Ozer. She's Technology and Civil Liberties Policy Director at the ACLU of Northern California. Karen Mitchoff, let's begin with you. Explain what this program is. Where are these radio frequency devices uh, being inserted on the children's clothes, and why are you doing it? Good morning. Uh, the children wear a jersey that has a little uh, pocket in it, and when the child comes to school each morning, a chip is placed in the pocket, and uh, the child wears the jersey throughout the day, and when the child leaves school, the jersey is removed and stays at the school, and the chip is removed. And why are you doing it? Uh, we got a technology grant. Uh, this is something that helps us at Head Start. I do want to make sure, um, you know, I, I've heard this thing about how uh, it's used to track prisoners and cattle and, and animals. This, is, you know, is, is completely different. It's very. Uh, um, uh, I just want to disabuse that that concept uh, because this is used as a as a tool to assist teachers doing their job. Uh, it's not to alleviate them of any responsibility. It's, uh, uh, as I say, we got a technology grant, and it was something that, that we decided to do to assist the teachers have more time for teaching. Uh, Nicole Ozer of the ACLU, why are you opposed to it? We're really concerned about this program and why actually federal stimulus funds are being used to track kids. Um, you know, RFID technology is very expensive, it's very intrusive, and it's often very insecure. And microchipping students is just a very bad idea. You know, what we're talking about here is tracking preschool kids with extremely powerful RFID technology that can be read at a distance of up to 100 meters away, so the length of a football field. And, you know, this technology has been used to track cattle, to track products moving through a manufacturing sector, through a warehouse. And while that might make some sense, trying to use the same technology on people, uh, particularly young children, leads to very serious privacy and security concerns. Um, RFID technology is designed so that the information that's encoded on that chip, whether it be a name, whether it be an address, whether it be a unique identifier number, can be read at a distance without anyone ever knowing that it's been read. So, you know, while we don't, while, while this school might have intended this as a cost-saving measure to help with attendance, the reality is that unless the security on these chips is airtight, when these kids are wearing these chips around the school, on the playground, and on field trips, unless that security is airtight, it's not just the teachers who can potentially read this information and track these kids. It's someone across the street or down the block that can potentially read these chips, read this information, and potentially use that information to harm kids. And, you know, we have seen that these tracking and security threats are very real. Uh, just last year, a security researcher read the RFID chips that are on the United States passport cards and the enhanced driver's licenses from a distance of 30 feet with a device that he built for $250 from parts that he bought on eBay. So, you know, we don't doubt that the school district may have thought that this was a cost-saving measure that potentially could be safe, but the reality is that we have seen time and time again that RFID technology can be very unsafe, and then it's just a very bad idea to use on children. Uh, Karen Mitchell, what about the security issues and also the cost? Could you talk about how, how much this is costing? You say you got a grant from the government for this? Sure. Um, and I recognize what Ms. Ozer is saying. We are uh, feel very confident that uh, while the issue she raises relative to other cases do not apply to this case, the tag is, is child-specific, uh, Has I'm sorry, has no child-specific information on it. Um, so anything that could be read 
there, there's just no child-specific information on it. Relative to the cost, uh, we got a $115,000 stimulus grant for technology uh, supplemented by a $45,000 grant uh, from Head Start. So the total grant amount is $160,000. For the first site, it was uh, $50,000, $50,000 uh, because this is our largest Head Start site. This uh, purchase the equipment and the jerseys and the tags. Uh, should we decide to roll this out to other Head Start sites, they are smaller in, in capacity, and so the cost won't be that much. We will be evaluating whether we do that or not. I don't have a time frame for when we will be evaluating that, um, and uh, that, that's how much it costs. And it was 50000 for about how many children? 200. There are 10 classrooms at this Head Start site, and each classroom has 20 children in it. Who initially came up with this idea? Was it the Head Start program that was looking to solve a problem, or was it the government that was looking to spend some money and to push forward this technology? Uh, this was uh, our Head Start site uh, that uh, recognized uh, that this would be a tool that could be used to assist teachers. Uh, they had known of the technology, and when the grant um, opportunity came across the staff person's desk, they looked and researched it more. Uh, we applied for the grant. The grant was awarded, and we went through a request for proposal uh, process. Uh, this was very public and, and uh, known as far as, as, as a process. Uh, there was no specific uh, company in mind. Uh, there was uh, um, three applicants put in for it, and then one company in California was uh, awarded um, the contract for us to move forward with this. And and then could you tell us whether uh, the reaction of the parents uh, of these children, were they, did they have to sign off on this, or is this mandatory for all the children in these daycare centers? Uh, the parents were notified. There were uh, community meetings, if you will, parent meetings. Uh, overwhelmingly, the parents were very supportive of this. It's not a mandatory program. Uh, should there be a reason uh, that a child should not participate, the child does still wear the jersey so that that child is not uh, teased or taunted, if you will, by the other children in the class as to why aren't you wearing a jersey and I am, uh, but the chip is not inserted in the pocket. Um, what is the district's intent? If you're not... Um if these t students aren't individually identified, uh, what's being accomplished by getting this aggregate information? And I, I do appreciate it. It's a very complicated issue. What happens is that is the tag or the chip has no child-specific information on it. When the child comes into the classroom that day and puts on their jersey and the